Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the BRS Overwatch, which is a pretty straightforward titanium frame lock utilizing S35VN. Uh, it's uh, it's kind of quirky and pretty straightforward, so this review is not going to be super long. The most interesting thing about it is its impressive price tag. Uh, I'll make sure and link this right down below. It is available right now, so you can check that out if you want to. Thanks to BRS for sending this in for me to take a look at. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of the Overwatch length coming in at seven and an eighth yeah seven and eight uh blade length coming in at three inches definitely three inches so be careful about that and then your cutting edge is coming in also just about yeah three inches right is that really the case there yeah it's just hair over three inches on total blade length just a few size comparisons up against the ontario rat model one and the ontario rat whoops model two so you can see here this really is about the same size as the rat too it's just i mean in terms of the overall length it's just a lot it's a more bulky knife how about up against the demco ad 20.5 uh the benchmade bug out and is my pair of three here yeah it is go ahead and do pair of three as well uh how's the action this is a titanium frame lock running on bearings made by brs or whoever they use the oem and it's honestly pretty smooth it's a little bit tight so it's not perfectly fall shut but it's good enough the flipper tab is pretty blocky the edges are a little bit they're not sharp they're just you know 90 degree angles like hard 90 degree angles same thing with this the actual frame lock itself there's a little bit of a cutout on the show side but not at all on the frame lock so you're really jamming your finger into a hard 90 degree angle uh, of titanium so it's not the most comfortable thing but it's not it's also not the most uncomfortable thing um did I say that right? It's not the most comfortable thing, but it's not the most uncomfortable thing to manipulate. Uh, deploying it is all right. I mean, it's definitely snappy. It's definitely got a fairly heavy detent, appropriate, I think, for the weight and mass of the blade and the design of this knife. And then the action back down into the closed position is satisfying with a nice, you know, click there on the detent. Length and height up against the PM2. Actually, no, carry profile. Thickness up against the Spyderco Pair 3. It's about the same, maybe slightly, slightly thinner. Length and height up against the PM2 and Pair 3. Why am I losing my knives today? There they are. It's about the, well, no, actually, it's quite a bit shorter in overall length versus the Pair 3. Nowhere near as long as the PM2. And even including the flipper tab. Actually, you know what? No. Including in the, the maximum height, right, right from here to here. Uh, it's about the same, about the same height as the PM2 and Pair 3. So keep that in mind. This is full titanium, and I think it's solid. It doesn't feel like there's any milling. Let's take a look. Uh, no, there's no milling at all. So this is um, probably going to be a fairly heavy knife for, you know, the size that it is. Uh, weight, yeah, 4.7 ounces. Ratios are nowhere near perfect. Uh, you definitely can feel that when you pick it up. It just feels heavy for the size of object it is. But it's still a 4.7 ounce object, which isn't that crazy. I would venture to guess my cell phone probably weighs, cell phone with a case on it probably weighs about the same as this knife. So, eh. you know, if you're wearing light pants, this isn't going to be the one for you. If you're in jeans, probably not bad. So do with that information what you will. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'll get all my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. Is this the T8? Yeah, there it is. Okay. The pivot is definitely a T8. And those body screws are definitely T6 screws. Interesting how they did this. We'll talk about that. Pocket clip screws are also T6 and so is the lock bar insert screw. Uh, minimal hardware though. So as long as you have proper tools and a place to put your hardware, you should be good to go. Let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness with my calipers that also have, there they are. I always lose those things. They are the, for whatever reason, on this desk over here, they are the one tool that is almost invisible. Okay, blade stock thickness. Holy crap. Can we see that? 154 thousandths. I don't know why it looks so dull on the camera. In, in, in my light, this doesn't look that dull at all. I don't know why the camera, maybe it's the reflection. That is really thick for a, a knife of this size. So it's a little bit of a chunky tank. I don't know why they went that thick on the blade stock, but you know, okay. 
Um, let's go ahead and move into the meat and potatoes here. This is just kind of an awkward looking knife. It looks like something that Kershaw would release. Um, and when I say that, I mean like these weird like plates and lines and this knife looks like it, it hasn't quite figured out what the theme is. It's like they started to do one theme like they started to do kind of a pirate folding knife and then they're like, no, let's do robots or no, let's do the future. Well, let's do all of it. <laughs> I don't, it's weird, right? It, it's just kind of an oddball looking knife. They've done like a black wash finished on the um, titanium frame. And then these little parts right here, which are just accents are like kind of a gold. I don't know if there are other, I didn't see any other colorations. It's just this black wash and kind of yellowy bronze um, setup. It's, it's, it's not even yellow. It's more like a mustard color, like a spicy brown mustard. So yeah, there's a uh, little, it's like a hex lanyard hole back here. I don't know if you can actually use it as a wrench or not. That would be kind of awkward. Uh, but you know, if you want to test it, if you want to buy the knife for 160 and then test it, knock yourself out. Um, yeah, as far as I can tell, they're just accents. It's just kind of a weird, like there's definitely like excess milling done, but it's, I, I just can't get a good read on like, it's just like part of the, like you look at this and you're like, ah, I think I can guess what the rest of the knife's going to look like. Oh, well. No, okay, well, maybe I can kind of, if they continue, well, they decided to do something different yet. Okay, <laughs> it's just kind of weird, right? And if you're into the look, then you're into the look. I'm not really into the look. Ergonomics, it's kind of, I can just barely get four fingers on there. The curvature of the knife doesn't feel super natural, but honestly, the part that is the most offensive is this. Oh my God, what is this? like a witch's finger it's terrible this is way i mean it's like it's almost like a keebler elf boot just sticking straight up this is not this does not feel good on your hand and the pocket clip is also too long um that is like the definition of a hot spot it is super pokey and totally they completely unnecessary i uh i do not like this clip no um, let's see here. Like I said, the blade steel on this guy is S35VN, which is a steel that I very much like. It's one of my favorite steels, so I don't have a problem with that. The uh, tumble finish on this looks pretty good. In fact, the uh, the whole blade looks pretty good. That fuller is definitely not usable as a means of deploying. It's just too shallow, so it's definitely just there for looks. The final cutting edge is thick. This uh, is not a blade that's going to excel at slicing. It will cut and it will slice, but it's not going to do it very well. It's kind of going to do a C minus job of it, right? It's kind of a like a Persian, like a scimitar blade, uh, which is making me think of pirates. Uh, we have a tip that is very robust, especially considering this blade style. Uh, it will be able to puncture and the edge is honestly ground pretty well. There's only a little bit of a goof back here, but I don't want to complain too much about that. There's a nice sharpening toil. Truthfully, sharpening this over time will probably be a breeze. It's just really thick and it's just going to get thicker as most knives do, but it's going to get crazy thick as you continue to sharpen it over time. Uh, this is, for, for a lot of reasons, this is not a knife that I would want to do, um, you know, continuous cutting with. Um, it's uh, more, you know, just a thing that looks interesting to some people if those people really like sort of confusing oddball designs that don't seem to be going in any particular direction. Um, the backspacer is there. It is cut below the titanium, which is always a little bit weird looking. There's a big oval in it. And then there are two prongs down here, which again, I can't really place with any other part. Like, am I alone in thinking this? The backspacer doesn't go with any other part of the knife. The pivot thing doesn't look like it goes with any other part of the knife. This whole confusing area doesn't really look like it goes with any other part of the knife. And then we have the blade, which looks like it belongs on any number of different designs, anything but the handle. It's just, just kind of weird, right? Um, I will say that overall fit and finish though is good. I mean, it's, it functions the way that you would expect a, uh, a knife of this caliber using these materials and at this price point. It functions that way. All of the materials themselves are nicely fitted. They're nicely seated, right? They're not, everything's nicely chamfered. It just didn't, it did not all come together. It's like, imagine doing a puzzle, right? 
and everything all fits together correctly, but the picture is just, ugh. Like, I wouldn't want, you know, like, imagine that the, the puzzle comes together and the picture is a, an old army boot filled with spaghetti and meatballs that's been out in the sun for a long time. You're like, oh, why did I make this? Why did I take so much time to put this together? This isn't a very pretty picture. It's gross, right? But there you go. So, <laughs> is that a helpful analogy? I don't know. It has a lanyard. Uh, <laughs> uh, what is this? Uh, hexagon? Um, it has a lanyard hexagon. Three and six. Yeah, okay. We have, I think, technically, this is a milled clip. It's just a very thin thin milled clip and I just hate it. I really don't like this clip. Carry depth is okay. It's about medium. Sorry, camera's shaking all over the plate. Plate, place. Um, once you get it up over the seam of your pocket, it should slide in and out with one hand, so no big deal. This has a standard stop pin. I don't, is that shouldered? Yeah, it is shouldered. Okay. No blade play up, down, left, or right. No lock stick, no double clutch, no pivot lash. Yeah, it's continued. This is about the same. I mean, there's no like tight spots or rough spots in there. Very clicky detent, and it is definitely centered. The most impressive part of this knife is the price tag. It's 160 bucks. Yeah, these are made in China, but holy crap, look at the competition. I have seen countless knives that are basically doing the exact same thing. They take a different form, and albeit, you know... <laughs> <laughs> a more aesthetically appealing form with a design that flows and makes sense. But I'm seeing, uh, you know, high-end Chinese OEMs using the same materials uh, and, you know, putting the same amount of work into a design and charging $250 to $300 for it. So this is substantially less than a lot of its competition. BRS is pretty good with pricing. They also have knives in their own line that are just inexplicably expensive. And sometimes I'm like, what, why, how did you get the pricing for that? And then you have other knives like this that are just way lower. So I don't know. If you like how this looks, if you, I mean, if you look at this and you can see a pattern in the design, you can, you know, or it just is appealing to you for whatever reason, then just ignore everything I said because it's a pretty good price and you'll probably like it. I mean, like I said, it's made well. I don't think it's anywhere near the most convenient of knives in its general competition zone uh, when we're talking about ergonomics, ease of manipulation, blade shape, and blade geometry. I mean, in all of those areas, it is as quirky as the actual design. It's just kind of a bleh, right? So, yeah, uh, recommendable in terms of the price tag for what it is and how it is made, right? I mean, just how well made the individual pieces are and how well it, it when everything fits together right but not recommendable at all for the design the ergonomics the blade geometry um and the blade profile uh, it's just a weird weird object and i i cannot emphasize this enough i hate that pocket clip you want to you want a good example of a pocket clip that i hate this oh my god that is just not i don't like that so weird knife Anyways, I think that's going to be pretty much it. Uh, that's really all I can say. Like I said, this will be uh, linked right down below if you want to check it out. Check out BRS's other stuff. They have some other stuff right now that's really good. And I would definitely recommend, like, if you're going to look at this, look at their other stuff. And I will make sure that BRS knives in general are linked down below as well. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.